Hi, thanks for watching Aquarium Tech today. Um, and again, I know I haven't been putting videos out. Um, I've actually got plans. I haven't actually planned the videos out. And I should, that's part of the problem because whenever I get the chance to make videos now, it's boom, it's on the fly. I'm just like, oh, okay, I'll make a video real quick. So uh, that's kind of how it goes. But I've been having problems here. Um, like, my camera right now is messed up. Uh, the battery. I hope it's just the battery, um, because I have to have it plugged into the wall at all times. I'm surprised you can't see the cord on the screen. It's like flying in the air, because I, I didn't want to get out the extension cord. You know, the cord's real tight, and it has to stay plugged in, or it doesn't work. Um, and the memory's low, and, uh, well, hopefully, the good news on that is hopefully, uh, if I ever get a chance, I'm going to shop around and try to get, like, a mini DV camera, and those are supposed to be a lot nicer in picture and quality and stuff so that'll be nice uh the other thing is uh hope i might even put some pictures before and after this video but i just got back from nicaragua that was pretty cool I didn't get to do some, I wanted to do some freshwater fishing there. I know some of the freshwater fish we keep in Aquaria are from that area, so I kind of wanted to do that. I didn't get to do that, but, uh, uh, oh my, I did see some cool critters, and I do I'll have a couple pictures. Uh, but today I was going to do a quick video review of the Aquion Power Filter Series. Uh, and the other thing, too, that I was saying about, before I go on with this, the, the other thing I was saying, too, is uh, I do have a lot of video topics planned, and all of them are coming from stuff that you guys have wanted to know about or had questions about, whether you PM me about it or in the comments. So I do have them planned. It's just a matter of me uh, being able to actually put a little planning in the videos. For something like this, I don't really have to plan too much. But for the more advanced and educational videos, uh, I do have to do a little bit of planning. And that's to answer some of your guys' questions. Um, but uh, anyways, so on with this video. Um, this one, I believe, is the smallest Aquion. I think it's like the Aquion 10 or 20. Now, I did, I did have one other one. I think it was like the 30 or the 40. And it was actually my friend's. He was letting me borrow it for a while so I could make sure I did a good review on this. I gave him back back to him a long time ago um, but I still have this one it came with one of my aquarium kits I got for really cheap a while ago um, so I'll figure I'll go ahead and do a review on this real quick I'm sure you guys have seen some of my feelings in my past videos about these filters uh, so some of you are already gonna know what I'm gonna say but I'll try to keep this as uh, you know informative as possible but anyways the Aquion series uh, power filters, I believe it's called the Quiet Flow. Um, they seem to be really popular, well, I shouldn't say popular, but they're in stores everywhere because they're a division of Central Pet, and believe it or not, so is Core Life, and there's a few other ones. Uh, but anyways, I'll go ahead and talk about some of the features of this before I start uh, loading in some facts and opinions and stuff. Um, but anyways, um, on, this, on this one, which is I think is the 10 or the 20, uh, the smaller model, we'll start here at the intake. Um, the intake is not adjustable, but it is the same kind of way as the old one. Or, I'm sorry, not as the old one, as the ones that are adjustable. Most of them have the telescoping tubes. This one, see it doesn't, it just comes right off. Alright. And then next, next up, you actually have your motor, which is right here in this area. Now, the benefit of having it there is that you don't have to prime the filter. A lot, Some filters have started doing this now. I can't remember all the ones that are starting to do this, but there are quite a few uh, that are kind of catching on. And it's not a bad idea um, to put it there. Uh, you, you know, the benefit is it's usually a little bit quieter. Um, sometimes it can be noisy. I've seen uh, a couple of rare cases where when the noise, or I'm sorry, the motor gets reverberations and noise, it's pinned right on the glass or it's kind of right there so it mm, and makes a lot of noise but that's not very common it never happened to me um, it actually stays pretty quiet and it primes itself which is uh, a, it's not a big deal but it's, it's nice the thing I, I hate though the, the problem I've had with this though you can actually see it on, let me zoom back in on the side of the filter oh, zoom in 
don't know if you can see that, all the water, because I, I, I use tap water, I don't use RO water or anything. You can see all the crust and stuff, which means water was there. I've actually had water travel up the power cord, you know, up here because it's in the water. I guess the electrical current carries it. And you, I don't know if you can see it on the side of the filter where the power cord is. It actually takes it down the power cord. And that's why if you read any directions for any uh, aquatic electrical product, whether it's a filter, power head, or whatever, they always tell you to put a drip loop in the power cord. So if you get water going down this, it'll drip at the bottom and not reach your cord and start an electrical fire or something like that. So anyways, to continue, you got your little top here. It doesn't snap in or anything. Um, and then we get to the gemstone, <laughs> and uh, you've got your regular filter cartridge, of course, the bigger the filter, the bigger the cartridge, it's just the regular cartridge, got your little, car your floss with carbon in it, and then it's got this little plastic thing that's supposed to be uh, bio something or another, whatever they call it, <laughs> I call it a joke. Uh, and then they've got another one of these plastic bio things right here. Uh, it's not, not really a whole lot to it, so, uh, yeah. Alright, and that's pretty much the parts of the Aquion filter. So, my review about this, <laughs> um, first off, I'll tell you to never buy one. And the reason why is, and I've used this term, I, sh I should kind of coin it, just, uh, to be clear with everybody, is a term I use for these types of filters are single cartridge filter systems. And of course the problem with them is, is that once you, you know, you have to, if you want to use the carbon that's in it, which is usually why people even change the cartridge, that's the only reason you have to change the cartridge is uh, the carbon, and that's what most people do. Of course you don't need carbon in the aquaria, though personally I suggest it, but it's not a need. That's the reason you throw it out, and that's where all your biological filtration is, that you work that whole month or whatever to build up. And these cartridges aren't cheap either, that's that's another thing, is it's it's actually cheaper with like the aqua clears to get that huge bag of carbon than it is to get that little tiny uh, filter thing. Uh, so that destroys your biological filtration because trust me, this little plastic thing, um, actually this one has a tiny bit of design to it where it's got some uh, bio ball stuff, type stuff on the back, but I've had this filter for a long time. You can see all the dust on it. I haven't even used it in a while. It doesn't grow anything. It does not grow bacteria. I mean, it's just slim plastic. I mean, there's nothing that can really grow on it. I mean, there's nowhere for it to attach. Um, you know, there's no micro cracks. It's not the ceramic beads. It's not foam. Uh, of course, with that being said, you can mod this filter maybe to get a little bit more out of it. But here's another problem with this filter. This filter has very bad bypass problems, um, even worse than the AquaClears. And bypass is where it basically bypasses the filter uh, or the filter cartridge. And I don't know if you can see in there, um, there's this little wall right here doesn't come all the way up with the rest of the wall so what happens is when the filter cartridge gets a little clogged the water just jumps over that and jumps on out of the filter and believe me it all i had at one point i had this on a 10 gallon filter with the beta okay and this it got clogged in like two weeks and i was like what are you kidding me i even had a sponge filter in there too um, so it's a huge problem with this filter, and and with the 30 or the 40 one I had, um, it wasn't as bad, and I had it, you know, in a more crowded tank. I had it on a couple tanks, actually. It was, it was kind of a temporary thing, um, but, uh, that one didn't do the overflow as easily, or the bypass, but it did do it, and it did do it within less than a month, which is a problem, because you're probably only going to touch your filter cartridge in. Uh, once a month, and you shouldn't have to do it any more than that for any reason. Um, so, honestly, biological filtration is almost at zero with this thing if you're using it as regularly as regular use or as instructions uh, demand. And the other thing is, it's actually the 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 motor's quiet, but it's not a quiet filter. When I, out of all the tanks I've had the two different models on, it is not quiet. Now the motor's quiet, but 
when it lets the water out, I guess the design of it, unless your tank is completely full to the tippy top, uh, you are not going to have a quiet filter. It splashes for whatever reason pretty bad. Um, yeah, so it's loud, doesn't do a lot of filtration, and e even if you want to say that that plastic does some kind of biological filtration, you still have almost no mechanical filtration. All you got is that little floss there and you barely got any chemical filtration either. It's not there. Uh, this is why I've always said stay away from these single cartridge systems. They're just, they're not really that great. Um, they, you know, they have their problems. And they, then also get into this intake tube, even the ones that are telescoping, I mean, that's a nice feature, but man, these things are a biatch to clean. Um, I mean, it's, it's kind of got like sharp little ridges all over it and stuff. So when something gets stuck on it, if you can't get it off with water, it's not coming off. If you try to use paper towels or something, it's just going to rip it and just make a bigger mess. Overall, this, I, I tell you right now not to buy this filter. This filter would never get a passing grade for me. This is probably the worst filter on the market. I know a lot of people aren't going to like that because they sell this in a lot of stores, which probably means a lot of you bought it. Um... I'm sorry to say, honestly, you know, I do these reviews reviews non-bias. Um, well, I take that back. I do do bias because I have knowledge in fish and fish equipment. So how can I not be biased? If I was unbiased, I would know nothing and I wouldn't be able to do, give you a review. But that's getting to the root of, that's giving you a vocabulary lesson. But anyways, so the only thing I can say is it's probably close if not the worst filter on the market. The Aquatex at Walmart are probably better. I haven't really looked at them, but uh, anyways. So that's about it for this video. Um, I hope, because uh, I did get some questions about this filter um, and stuff, so hopefully this can answer any questions you guys have about this filter, and hopefully you guys found it informative and helpful. All right? If you guys have any questions, please PM me. That's the better way to get a hold of me. Alright, thanks for tuning in.